Now this video has 600,000 views at this time of recording by Professor Scott Brueckner. Now I tried to watch this as a student, but the problem is it's a whole hour long. So my goal is to break it down into five minutes so you can take away all these tips in a much shorter time. Hi, I'm Hugo. I'm a study performance coach at Study Smarter Academy and a doctor and pharmacist. We have lots to cover, so let's dive right into this. And Professor Brueckner talks about a lot of tips within this video, but I want you to break it down simply for you, just into three main parts. What you need to do before your lecture, during your lecture, and after your lecture. So so the first step is before your lecture. Take a moment, maybe even five to 10 minutes each night just to review what's going to be taught in the next day because this increases your intent and focus for the next day because you'll be looking out for information that you don't already know and you already know the big topics that might be taught in that day. If you even have time, spend another five to 10 minutes just skimming through the textbook. What are the big headings? What are the textbook? What are the images like? What are the headings like? What are the tables like? Make sure you're familiarizing with yourself, basically priming your brain to be ready to take really good notes. And the second part he talks about is basically during the lecture, what you should be doing inside the lecture now, because now you're prepared before the lecture, here it is now, what should you do? The first rule he really talks about is when in doubt, write it down. There is probably not much time for you to analyze it at the moment. If you continue to fixate on processing that information, you have no time or you're missing out on a lot of other information. So just jot it down and continue to focus on listening what is coming up. And then the number two point he talks about is going on a diet because most students write way too much. Word for word, verbatim, typing, all of these, they're writing way too much. Instead, try to use things like abbreviations and flow diagrams, mind maps, all of these things can help. For example, the word reconstruction can be shortened to recon or even that capital R if that's the main focus. And if you need to make it legend or a page that summarizes all of this information that you have abbreviated. And make sure you also leave out the unimportant words like in, the, a, like all of these that don't convey meaning. And number three, he talks about practicing. Just like any skill, you're likely not going to be very good at taking notes at first, but as you do more and more of it, you'll develop a very efficient way of taking notes. And then number four tip during your lecture is to know your instructor. Make sure you know their lecture style, how much they actually talk, how much tangents do they go? Are they actually very structured? Do they go all over the place? Make sure you know your instructor and to mold your note taking style around your instructor. One thing he really advocates is that if you don't know your lecturer, make sure you take your page of written notes and bring it down to them and go, is these type of notes what you expect? And you know, are these kind of type of information going to be coming up in exams? What can I do better? Where have I messed up? So this is kind of the time that you can get personalized feedback and also get a feel of what might be coming up in the exams and what your lecturer really wants for you to learn from this particular lecture. And then it also gives an opposite example. For example, a student goes to the lecture, they take bad notes, they don't know what's bad, they continue taking bad notes, and these notes don't reflect the amount of information that is required to go into the exams. So seeking feedback is really important, particularly if your lecturer or teacher are the ones setting the exam questions. This is very, very important. And then finally, point number five, he talks about having a great note-taking system. And more specifically, he talks about the Cornell note-taking method. I don't have much more time to expand on this, but I'll link this video if you want to find out more. Basically, taking page, take notes as you were in this particular corner, have the side so you can actually do summaries, titles, and then down below, you have a summary summarization section so you can force yourself to have active recall sessions. Basically trying to have more engagement in your learning, multifaceted, trying to sort your notes into titles, organize them in a meaningful way. That's one way of learning. And then also summarizing it so it forces yourself to make those connections with what you've learned already. All of this are very effective learning techniques as well. And in the third part, which is after the lecture, we talked about that Cornell note-taking method. That's actually summarizing. So that down bottom bit is where you need to do it now to summarize, to actually form deep understanding of the concepts that you have already and to form it into your own words, teach to other people. All of these ways are really, really effective for your learning as opposed to trying to wrote, learn, rewrite and you know chant to yourself all of that information and to beat your brain into submission. Try and not do that. Try to do more active learning methods like what we've talked about just now. And then he talks about reviewing interactively. Try to cover up your notes. Now using the side column, you have all the topics. So test yourself. What can you remember from these topics that we just talked about? And then try to do the summary down the bottom. Try to teach it to some person, teach it to a table, teach it to a chair, teach it to a five-year-old, teach it to your fellow classmates. All of these are really, really good ways of consolidating that information inside your brain. Then he talks about this last thing about typing, rewriting these notes that you have on your page. Not just rewriting them passively, but to try and reorganize these informations, put them into a particular order, rearrange them, make sure that you're connecting these with different images and have relationship between the things that you've already learned. So I hope this summary has been helpful for you. Make sure to like and subscribe and look forward to seeing you in the next one.